Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we're doing yet another cave exploration video. We're reacting to a cave exploration video. Um, we did the last one from friends and people love that. They were like, more, more cave exploration. So here we are. Those guys were amazing, by the way. Unbelievable. <laughs> Um, but, uh, this one right here is with Mike Young, who's oh. been on the show multiple times. How appropriate. Um, yeah. In the spirit of Mike. This was back in 2003. So I, I reach out and ask him, you can see it's a long, you know, it's a while ago. I asked him, he said, when do you guys do this exploration? He said from 2003 to 2005. So it's two years worth of content. Well, you do realize that my reaction, the second you said it's Mike Young, everything's perfect. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, I'm so biased. Oh, yeah. it's Mike Young. Mike, it's awesome. He did perfect. Mike was doing <laughs> amazing, insane, insane dives. Shocked. Twenty years ago, right? you know, a long time ago. Uh, funny thing, he's in open circuit, so Kiss Rebreathers wasn't mm -hmm. even a thing, I guess, uh, or maybe they were too big for what they were doing. But they're in open circuit. Really interesting video. So let's get going because it's pretty long, and this one is 27 minutes. Uh, but the original one is like 50 minutes. So there, uh, the link is below in the description. If you want to check out the full video, go ahead and, and take a look. Well, when, whenever you start a, a new project, you, you, you gather what information you can, which generally would be very limited uh, because uh, people are only guessing at what's below the surface here. And, and they had said that this uh, had been tested at some point and that it had a a uh, 10 foot diameter hole at the bottom of the spring pool here that went down 500 feet you know and and that they had used you know a heavy weight and a rope to determine this and and so you can pretty much guarantee that that's not going to be true just because <laughs> that's the, the going story so <laughs> that's funny so let me let me just explain as quick as possible he's diving at a place called blue spring it's in north arkansas northwest arkansas close to roaring river like that area and this water was, it's like protected by like, um, you know, like uh, Native Americans, basically. It's like a holy site or th there's something with Native Americans that w did not allow any divers ever to go into this spring, right? Um, so what he's saying is true. All they know is somebody went in with a, with a weight and a rope and they lower it and they're like, oh my God, it goes 500 feet. And Mikey's saying, he's like, well, that's just not, I mean, there's not a hole that's going to go 500 feet. That's not true. Um, but they were the first divers ever allowed to explore this cave. Cool. So there's no information about it. We don't know how deep, restrictions. Nobody knows. They're the first ones. Pretty cool. Very. But we, we, we were prepared for that. If the rumors are true, it will take a lot of equipment. Wow, you cool have to be video, really Mike. careful setting up your gear. You do a lot of checks, a lot of rechecks, uh, in order to eliminate the possibility of problems. Back mount doubles. Free breathers just changed his uh, game. I was the first one to jump in the spring. Uh, let me tell you, the water was just clear, breathtaking. Uh, I just couldn't wait to get started. Like Roaring River, probably. 58, something like that. Rolling. Typically, we'll do a safety Sick check person. on the surface before we do a dive. And that's to check that everything is okay before the dive starts. After that, I swam off to the side to attach a safety line. Uh, that's to make sure that everybody was able to get out. And I want us to comment too on how much has changed on the last 20 years since they did this, and also how much has not changed, like safety lines. Well, this is definitely, yeah. The uh, entry fissure. He's using dive right fins. And is much smaller than they had <laughs> Those hoped. haven't changed. True. What has changed is that we haven't seen Mike Young on open circuit <laughs> since this video was filmed. <laughs> ever. Uh, on our first dive in, we, we went in with, uh, with conventional. Uh, uh, you know, cave diving equipment, which are very large steel tanks on our back. Uh, when and we got down to the crack, and, and, and the crack is, you know, 
12 to 18 inches wide, well, that, that's pretty much the size of our tanks, let alone our bodies, you know. We, and, uh, and we were really disappointed at the first dive when, when we were not able to make entry into the, into the spring itself. End of dive one. Yes, it's the, coming the off. It's so small. Uh, but it also presented challenges that, that n most cave divers don't, uh, don't face. The team will need a new approach and some luck to unlock the mysteries of Blue Spring. Well, Mike's good with problem solving. That's for sure. For a small entry, they must make themselves smaller. They'll reconfigure their equipment for side mount. It's unconventional, and their air supply will be more limited. Isn't that funny? It's unconventional. Now it's standard. Mainstream, yeah. Is Mike wearing wrestling shoes? Looks like just big, thick dry suit. Most divers wear a wetsuit. We wear a dry suit because the water is cold. It allows us to wear insulation underneath to keep us warm. It has these latex seals on the wrists and on the neck to keep the water out. Well, and most seals now, most people wear silicone. Yeah. Because latex is, is a little bit more durable, but it, you can be sensitive to it, and they're not as easy to change. Look at this. This is my computer. dive computer. Okay. That's it calculates changed. my decompression for me. It uh, has uh, the ability to put different gas mixes in for uh, your bottom mix and uh, also different decompression gases to accelerate the decompression. This uh, is the battery pack for our primary light. And these hooks here are what we attach our tanks to. That's not so different, you know? This plate, he made it. There's no we way. We have a lead plate in the back. Like, he made that. That uh, <laughs> gives us our negative buoyancy to counteract the weight of the insulate or the uh, lift of the insulation that we're wearing. We also have an air cell on there that can be inflated to give us lift. Not only did he make it, it's possible that he made it that day. I got a problem. <laughs> Let's go to work. It that is night. a uh, 35 watt with about a 10 degree beam. 10 foot beam, we still use 10 degree beam. That's that's a narrow beam we use that for cave diving. Still today. Nice, looks good. Pretty clean. As you can see, this gives us a lot thinner profile that allows us to get into tighter places. Very cool. The team good video. Again. When you switch over to a side mount system, you have two separate tanks, you have two separate regulators, and uh, each one uh, is feeding you know is completely independent of the other and uh, if you have a failure on one you have a backup that way um, but it also you you have to manage your your gas uh, more they efficiently you can't just had uh, the bungees. breathe off of one tank only, I wasn't gonna say it but uh, we could and then improve on the tank and then, trim and then get on the other oh, one because if it fails you then very early then you it's have Mike nothing. do so not say one you know, perfect off this one and a certain amount I love that one we're doing it wrong I'm changing it to this <laughs> floppy <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we should do that next time. Now, even Mike's tanks don't look like this anymore. Like, at Roaring River, they were, like, perfect. But this was very early. And, but Mike will tell you that he's not, like, Mr. I'm the best in the world with tank trim. Mike's yeah. sort of more like, I'm the best at the world level. I'm going to get my gear configuration to work for the mission that I'm on. And he will tell you that. And even when fair, I recently was with him in Mexico, he's like, look, it depends what I'm doing. He doesn't automatically say, well, I'm going to dive like this every time. I tend to get over dramatic and I'm like, yeah. I'm going to never change. Now I always want to do this. Mike's like, well, depends what I'm doing. And I like his approach. To be fair, to be fair, I'm such a newbie that this is probably the best way to do it. So he can be more malleable around the cave. Like we're just like I'm such a newbie cave diver that I'm like, why are they so floppy like that? And Mike, if he was here, he would probably be like, they have to be like that, so I can move around in the restrictions. And I'll be like, ah, that's right, I'm an idiot. Well, that part, yeah, you know. All right, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got down to the crack and and um, and eased in, and uh, of course it was kind of tight, and and that that always you know brings oh, on my. a little apprehension, you know, whenever you start trying to squeeze through something. I'll be up there like, don't worry, I'll be right here, surface, safety. 
Honestly, I would be following him. I tend to go where Mike goes. Like, yeah. I just can't help it. It's like, I got to go. Look at that little slit. They have no idea what's on the other side of that, though. No clue. That's, can we turn around? Can we? Who knows? Look at this guy going. Can I, can I go? Head first. Mike went feet first. And who is in first? Oh, I can see Mike sending into the entrance and uh, I thought I would go head first to see if it would be any easier. Was it? Looks like it was. Bink! Bonk! Go kick. Nice. I think he's going to get it. Just squeeze the ticks. Mike could pull him though. I, I could see a yank coming. You got it, dude. You're so close, I think. And when you are diving with Mike, by the way, oh. in like these cave explorations, he is so helpful to you as the person that's diving. I mean, well, I remember like, I'm trying to remember like little things and all of a sudden I would feel Mike do a little something to me and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm free now or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just right there. We decided that I would stay on the outside of the entrance just in case anything went wrong. That would be in me. case of emergency. But not because we decided, because I wouldn't fit. Yeah. But it opened up pretty soon, you know, pretty quickly in, into, into a fairly uh, large uh, little room that we now call the staging room. Cool. I uh, started looking around and uh, swam down the, the, the corridor. Uh, of that of that room and uh, realized it was starting to get tight you see those walls how they look like rock but they also don't they sort of remind you of the roaring river walls where if you Definitely. even pff, look at them wrong it's a, they're actually not rock is what I'm getting at they're yeah. like mu hard mud so yeah. they silt out immediately there's no not silt in an area like this no And we started looking around for where the flow was coming from. And at the bottom of the room, about 50 feet, there was a small crack covered with rock. And, and my first thoughts was, was, it was so disappointing that, that, that we only went into the cave, you know, 10 or 12 feet. And, and here's this, this pile of rubble that is plugging up the, the pathway. You can see through the hole, the cave keeps going and you're like, Arr! I can see maybe digging happening soon. And the risk is that it collapses. Yeah, watch. Get out of here, Rock. Uh, and then I moved a few of the rocks, and they moved real easily, you know, that there actually was cave down below it. And, uh, and so then I got excited again that maybe, maybe we could go on through, you know? Yes. But at that point, that was the end of that dive. Uh, it, it was time to come out. But you got to remember, everybody, when you're doing this type of cave exploration, you're moving major boulders. This is what they talk about that can result in collapse. Mm -hmm. You have no idea if that boulder is the one holding everything up. Risky, different level. Yeah, I guess it's a process for it. Like, you move it and see what happens. Pick it up. As it's long okay. as you're not anywhere under it. But by the way, if this was rebreather days, this it is far from Soviet. over. Yeah. In the cave. The divers are finding artifacts of a much more recent history. It looked like in the last hundred years, the spring seemed to be an easy place to get rid of things. While exploring Garbage. the staging room, I came across a large railroad tool. It looked like it was uh, aluminum or stainless because it had been polished by the, the flow of the water in the rocks. They find a freight wagon hub. Like the uh, sort of Native American music in the background. Various tools from the 20th century. Wow. A large ratchet gear from one of the grist mills. People just throwing stuff in there. And a strange circular object. Well, of that? course, after we had found all the things down in the staging room, uh, we just wanted to push it as far as we possibly could. 
We cleared off all the rock and debris at the bottom of the stage room, and, but now we were calling it the second restriction. And it was time to see second if we could get beyond that. almost over. It's like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, this restriction is very, very narrow. It's about 12 inches wide and about 30 inches long. 30 yeah. centimeters. 12 inches wide, that's tiny. Yep, that's really small. Man, I wish I was... <laughs> time I see this. I finally slipped through and I found myself in a corridor. And I looked down and wow, we have cave here. That's awesome. Go through a hole, more cave. Get to the when end, I came another through hole, the restriction, more I, cave. I immediately wow. got entangled in a line. Stay calm like he's doing and just deal with it. Troubleshoot. And uh, after I solved that problem and got untangled, I was amazed at what I saw. There was this large formation. It was a rock that had been eroded on both sides by the flow of the spring, causing it to be shaped like an airplane. Wing. So, Mike, when, can we go? I just can barely you get managed permission to get a second restriction. Permission. I couldn't believe that there was so much more cave below us. We swam down and there's another restriction. It is about the same size as the second restriction. Hmm. Look at this. Now in this system, any place that you can actually turn around, we call a room. <laughs> below the third restriction is a room it's like a tube shape. It's about five feet in diameter a, and about uh, 15 feet long. There's a gravel small floor that's on a slope. The water flow is really strong here. We started looking around for the source, and we see this small opening uh, just to the north side that was choked up with gravel. Uh, so here we are at 85 feet, and this restriction looks too small, and we think the exploration is over. Think. So it's... this had been a long dive. The nitrogen was building up. I looked at my computer, and it was time to go. All right. Boy, these open circuit days were tough. You don't have time, especially if you are sticking with the rules of thirds. And I wonder if um, cave explorers stick to the rule of thirds or if they go safer like fourths or fifths or i mean i don't know we started having some problems Thirds. Just... i mean is there anyone out there still doing cave exploration on open circuit i don't probably. know anyone yeah maybe. probably i mean but yeah it's yeah. so much better on rebreather yeah and all the people stage. from kur wkpp like all of those you know organizations that are doing cave exploration they're all on rebreathers yeah Everyone. It's changed everything. Yeah. Every time one of us would go through a restriction, uh, we would get tangled in the line. Okay, you're in an awkward situation. You're halfway through a restriction, and you're tangled in the line, and you can't move. I, in this system, awkward. <laughs> the, the line became a bigger hazard than getting lost would be. So we thought about it for a long time, and we decided to remove the line no in line. the area that we had explored and were real familiar with. This yeah. system is so vertical and with no side passages. So uh, can't very okay. few. Can't uh, get lost. It's a we chimney. thought it would be best without the line. Okay. At the I turn mean, of the century, Eureka Springs was becoming famous as a resort city. The springs were thought to have healing power, and the community was growing. At this time, it was the second largest city in Arkansas. Even now, it's a popular tourist spot. Name three cities in Arkansas. <laughs> I can't even... Early on, the spring was used as a water source and to drive mills to cut lumber uh, in the Roaring River. 
But in 1903, the owners of Blue Springs started to realize the importance of the grounds as a Duncan. tourist attraction. Duncan? No. Duncan Donuts? They decided there, to contain the water with a concrete cap and build a wall along the Barlin? edge of the spring. Well, at that time, they were doing a lot of construction here, and they diverted the flow of the spring. And so they pushed a lot of the construction debris down into the cave, uh, concrete chunks, leftover gravel, all kinds of construction stuff. Ruined the I guess it was a convenient place to dump it. It didn't help us out much. It choked up the fourth restriction. We all talked and decided that we must go on and uh, not give up. Uh, Shocker. So we decided to remove some of the gravel and, and uh, see if there's more caves there. Yeah. That's but again, what we just did at the aquarium. <laughs> but again, you see, that is, that is the difference between cave exploration and what we do, which is follow a line, go in existing caves. Because anytime you're moving stuff, you do not know if that's going to result in collapse, let alone if it's going to give you a reward. Yeah, but there's a real difference, huge difference. The divers design a labor-intensive bucket brigade operation. Cool. One diver would be down in the gravel room at 85 feet bagging similar. gravel. Not exactly. Because of the silt, it would be very low visibility. The there. only similar part you is your hand moved to, out diver to put the something in a bucket. And that's where the similarity ends. and then he would swim it up and hand it through the second restriction. I mean, how many dives do you need, 50, just to get the gravel One out of the way? Diver in the staging room and grab the bag. It's like a circuit. They're just passing the gravel off. Hook it on the rope. The question is, why is that rope not going all the way to the bottom? Tangle, again, it's in the way, I don't know. diver would pull the bag up and swim it to the side. And if this was those German guys that we reacted to, it would be a system just like, you know, those buckets just come in, grab gravel and robot, out. Robots digging. I don't know. They're so advanced. <laughs> this is pretty impressive. Yeah. They were determined, weren't they? Serious amount of work. Yeah. People watching this are probably into a container. And Gus, you and I are like examine it and see if there were any artifacts or native stone in it. People watching this are probably like, man, these guys must be getting paid so much money to yeah, do this. Yeah, I get paid exactly negative <laughs> five thousand. So much money you spend to do it. Look how slow every back. You know, it. seriously, I want to be realistic. You and I go down, we look at that thing. Mm -hmm. I write you a wet note. Let's dig all of this gravel out. You're like, yeah. It's... No, but like, how long do you do this for? How long would you be like, if this took you one week of just diving every day to take gravel out, would you still be willing to do it and continue? Without knowing if you're right. ever going to get anywhere. But, but if somebody told you it, it's going to take a week of you know, taking gravel out of here before you can move on. Will you do it? With Mike? Just with with whoever. Yeah. What if it was a month? No. Non-stop every day. Well, you just keep watching. But they're doing it with no knowledge of ever giving a reward. Like five years, I'm digging. I mean, they don't know. Mm -hmm. That's determination. The gravel moving went on dive after dive and month after month. No. <laughs> yes. Only Mike. The divers have spent months removing construction debris no. and gravel from the fourth restriction. Months. That's incredible. They were finally able to move on past the fourth restriction. Unbelievable. There was a small room beyond with a floor that sloped down 45 degrees. This is when you want Before them to call you. Woody, the gravel is out. To another you can <laughs> I'm, 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 I can help now. <laughs> Which was a small hole. the size of a basketball. The next the restriction is the size of a basketball. move gravel down in the fifth, more would slide down in place. Uh, the divers spend another month moving gravel no. and clearing, to some degree, the fifth what? restriction. This is unbelievable. Relentless. 
How is this video not the biggest video in the world? <laughs> Who's done yeah. this in the world? Do you guys understand out there how amazing Mike Young is? Like, I don't see other videos that react to of anybody with this level of determination. They commit. And he's so, like, doesn't talk about it. No. He's humble. He's like, well, you know, we're I just digging. Yeah. You would have done the, the same. And move on. No, Mike, we wouldn't have done the same. <laughs> Months. I would have moved like four it rocks. got to the point where it looked I'm like done. a Call one it. diver might could squeeze through and see if we were wasting our time or if it went on. So we thought we were ready and decided to make a run at the fifth restriction. We decided that Mike should attempt the fifth restriction of course. Uh, with me and Kendall assisting. Who else are you going to say? Right, we're all voting. Who no wants Woody to do it? Mike, no hands. One okay. tank, Go. and it's not attached to you. So One you push tank. it out in front of you so that it no gives mount. you a lot smaller profile. Now we're already 10 stories deep with four restrictions behind us. And no mount is a pretty extreme situation. But we had to find out what was behind that fifth restriction. Yeah, I'm going to uh, cast my vote as well. Mike. <laughs> All in favor? All <laughs> Although we've made a lot of dives in here, I was really nervous about this one. I was excited too, though. That's why when Mike asked me stuff, he's like, Woody, wanted fine. to know if you would. Everybody yep. seemed to be ready. I will. I'm in. That was still an awful <laughs> small hole, though. Wow. No amount of that depth. Yeah, and I'm not question. I'm not getting into technical. Like, I wonder what kind of gas. I wonder how deep. Got down Are there stage tanks above them? There's a lot we could be talking about. Yeah. That, you know, Mike could probably fill in the gaps in the comments. I don't know what the mixture is, for example. I don't know if there's O2 at 20 feet. I don't know if there's stage gas. They, they do go into some of those details on the full day. They do? Okay. Mike was ahead of me, ready to enter the fifth. <coughs> if you disturb the gravel at all, the silt kicks up and it wipes out the visibility. I was in the back. I couldn't see very well anyway. I had removed one of my tanks and had my no mount bottle. We were all ready. So now it's time to go. Wait, wait, what is that? It was pretty freaky. Like an electrical Mike plug? Disappearing into the hole, and all the gravel was huh? just caving in around. Charge the. Oh, that's that's not good. What they said, all the gravel was caving in around. It. That's scary. That's what I mean. This thing could collapse. Look, you, look at his fence. So he may have to dig his way back out. Is what we're getting at. On Does a single it? tank. It was really, really tight. <laughs> and I didn't really think I was going to get back out. As I just said. 102 uh, feet. It was 102 feet. It was pretty cool. It was uh, great to see him get out. Great to see him, you know, get in. There was really only about this much room. Well, let me see. Yeah, about that much room. <laughs> So I started pushing gravel out ahead of me, and I would uh, move some in and then go about six inches. Uh, I was pretty lucky at the beginning, I was able to move my, uh, my cylinder off to the side so that I could see where I was going. But as I got further in, I had to move the cylinder over in the way, so then, then the only place I could move the rock was, was off to the left. Later, the divers recreate the passage of the fifth restriction okay. for the camera. I mean, it's a, re re a, re a recreation, recreation, but still, man, that's what it looked like. Yeah, that could collapse. Look at the thing. You have no idea if it, it was could a, uh, very closed in. Not much freedom of movement. I only had one arm that I could really work with, wow. uh, that I could move gravel with, and then and just keep going an inch at a time, you know, and. Uh, if I would have panicked and tried to get out of there, it would, there was just no way to get out. I mean, they just had to keep digging uh, keep going to get it. out. As we removed the gravel and we were able to get through that fifth restriction, the room beyond the fifth is about 10 feet long and 4 feet wide. And it looks like a large portion of the ceiling had fallen down and sealed up the fissure. That's what I'm worried about. 
could happen. Look at that. At, like a it was just a small triangular shaped hole at the back of the room. I mean, it is really tight. Because this was an unknown part of the cave, we ran line there. We also installed a pull rope from the fourth restriction to the sixth so well, the that we flow. could get through easily in high flow. Actually, Mike Wright was the first one to penetrate the sixth restriction. He ran line down to 138 feet. Nice. From 103. Look at this. Boom, let's look at their tie off. Does it go under? Under and around? For a lock the next off. day, I took the line on down to 180 feet. Yeah, I think so, probably. So down to 180? 180. Open circuit. And there's About no a week later, rushing to get out. I took the line down to 211 uh, and cool. tied off there. And there was a restriction, but it looked passable. looks passable for them. Yeah, of course. I took the line down to 218 feet. And there's a crack there that's about 8 inches wide and 10 feet long. It's obviously not passable. Man, and there's more caves on there. Over the next few dives, we spent a little bit of time looking around to see if we were missing a larger passage, but unfortunately that's the where the spring's coming in. So this was the end of the line. All that water coming out of that little crack. That's it. Exploration is never certain. Uh, there were several times that we thought we were stopped in the system, mm -hmm. but uh, we were able to get to this depth. In order to go on, they would have to deface the very thing they're exploring. Mm -hmm. You have to make the hole bigger by destroying the cave around them. They're not going to do that. Everybody has limits. Uh, we we were uh, in some situations that were uh, real close to our limits, and uh, now we have a better definition of, of what we're able to do uh, in a safe manner. It was a real technical challenge and we learned a lot. We were able to see things that no one has ever seen before. Cool. That's awesome. I <sighs> enjoyed that. You get in that, you know, mindset of I wish I was doing that. It's so awesome. Um, and like I said, this is just a little bit more than half of the full documentary, which Mike has posted on his channel. If you're not subscribed to Mike Young, you should definitely give it a shot. There's a lot of cool videos there. Um, and I'm going to link it down in the description so you guys can can link uh, or can, can enjoy those videos as well. Now, as Woody mentioned, he wanted to be there. And the reason for that is that he actually has done something like that with Mike at Roaring River. And in case you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave it right here. You guys can check out the two videos for Roaring River. It's pretty awesome. Bye, everybody. And Mike, I'm in.